بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمد الذاكرين الشاكرين والصلاة والسلام على إمام النبيين والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to lessons in fiqh we are still studying نور what chapter a chapter connected to with uh, sutra with sutra and the the book is called fadi bulugh al-maram compiled by abu malik ibn hajar al-asqalani okay uh, the hadith we have before us is hadith number 184 narrated by abu sa'id al-khudri may, uh, may allah be pleased with him allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if one of you prays towards an object separating him from the people and someone tries to pass between him and the object in front of him, let him turn him, let him turn him away. But if he refuses, he should fight him, for he is a devil. In another narration, for there is a Satan with him. Okay. Now, the hadith is crystal clear. If you're praying to something, to the, an, an object, and one wants to pass between the object and you, you should prevent him if he does not uh, 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 comply. You should fight with him, and even if you use s slight force, because he is a devil or he has this devil with him that is Qareen, that is telling him to do this. The hadith has an origin to it because Abu Sa'id al-Khudri was doing this in the Masjid of Medina. He was praying, and one boy from Al-Ansar wanted to pass through looked right and left, couldn't find any way except in front of Abu Sa'id. So he wanted to pass through. Abu Sa'id put his hand, stuck his hand out, meaning stay away. And he continued praying. And the guy insisted on coming in. So Abu Sa'id pushed him real hard and prevented him from passing through. So the boy was angry and he went to the governor of Medina. And he told him, why Abu Sa'id does this to me? Why did he do this to me? <clears throat> so the man came to Abu Sa'id and told him, Why did you do this with this young chap? He's a young man. He told him because the Prophet ﷺ said the hadith that we have just heard. So whenever someone wants to pass between the object in front of you or a person in front of you or whatever is in front of you that uh, 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 is considered to be your sutra, you have to it's a must it's not something that well if you want don't and if you uh, you you have the choice no you have to prevent him from passing and now the minute we read this hadith one would say okay i'll prevent him what happens if it's a she can you prevent her physically well you may do this and pull your hand because you're not allowed to touch women that are not yani, related to you. So you may do this. But if she insists on passing, then tough luck. You have to pray all over again. Because no one would say, well, she brought it to herself. I have to stop her. No, you're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed. This is even worse sin than what she's doing. But if it were to be a male, if he was a person, then you may prevent him with your hand. If he insists, then in, in, in the hadith, it says that uh, you have to turn him away, and if he refuses, you should fight him. So if he <coughs> is unlucky, and you have a black belt in karate or in, in, in taekwondo, it's not a, a advisable to say, ah, chop his head off. No. To fight him is to use some sort of force. So, okay, what about if the guy does jiu-jitsu and he starts grappling with you and puts you and pins you to the ground? This does not become prayer. Is it allowed for me to punish him in the, uh, in the face? Just smack him and, 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 and let it be? This is not possible. It's not acceptable. So don't, talk, don't go to extremes. In Islam, you are not allowed to go to extremes, even with your enemies. Even if someone is uh, 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 abusing you or assaulting you, in the sense that, if I'm in my house and somebody wants to break in, now what do I do? Some of, of the brothers say, well, I just use my nine millimeters and bang, between the eyes. Is this permissible? One says, yes, 
I have a hadith that tells me that if anyone wants to take your money, you may kill him. Does this hadith say this? No. The hadith say, says that if a person wants to take your money, don't give it to him. And if he fights you, fight him. So you should start gradually by saying, listen, I, I, can, I, I know that you want to break into my house. Don't do this. I'm armed. He insists and breaks in and comes into you. Shoot his legs first. Well, give him a, a, a warning shot. He still continues to come in. Shoot his legs. He still uh, uh, crawl to reach you. Then shoot his, his arms. He still has some means to get to you. Then shoot him in the eyes. Shoot him between his eyes. It's okay. But don't jump to conclusion. The same thing is with the person wanting to pass in front of you. It happens so many times that people pass without noticing. He, did, he doesn't know that you're praying. And you immediately, bang, punch the guy in the face. This is not acceptable. You should do this. And they know that they are passing in front of a person who's praying. They stop, usually. If they insist, you may physically prevent them from doing it or pushing them. And this is considered to be fighting. But nowhere that the Prophet tells you, Alayhi Sam, to jump and, you know, choke the guy to death or give him uh, a, a sleeping uh, lock uh, or whatever. N no way the Prophet tells you to do this because if you do this, then you are not praying. This contradicts with the, the state that you're supposed to be of submissiveness and concentration within the prayer. Does anybody have a question regarding this uh, topic? Yes, Mustafa. Suppose he actually forces you to, yeah, to drop your hand and then he passes. Do you have any... Uh, uh, yes, this, any this could happen this because time? you would do this and the guy stops. And the minute you go back to your prayer, the guy just moves in. So what do we do? Abandon prayer and catch them, <laughs> the so-and-so and, and pin him to the ground and start beating him? No, Khalas, he, he's gone. He's, he, he's passed away. Then he's the sinful one. He will be questioned by Allah Azza because he committed a major sin. But no one tells you that, you know, reach out and bring him back and put him back where he was because he already passed. So you're going to make him pass again. So it, it becomes double uh, 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 um, sin. And this is not acceptable. Uh, the following hadith. Narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when one of you prays, he should put something in front of him. And if he cannot find something, he should, he should set up a stick. But if he has no stick with him, he should draw a line. Then what passes in front of him will not harm him. Okay, this hadith is not authentic. It's regarded as da'if. So uh, we don't have to consider it as any evidence. Nevertheless, the meaning is true in the sense that when you pray, it's preferable and recommendable that you put something in front of you. And if you cannot, just set up uh, uh, um, an arrow or stick. If you cannot, draw a line. It's better than not having anything to signify that you have your prayer borders in front of you. Uh, the following hadith. Narrated by Abu Sa'id al khudri May Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Nothing interrupts salat, meaning prayer, but avert as much as you can, meaning the things that cut off prayer. Now this hadith again is ba'if. It's not authentic. And nothing interrupts prayer, nothing voice prayer. This is, of course, we have a stronger hadith, which is in the, in the Sahih, that tells us, no, the, the prayer is interrupted and it's cut by the previously mentioned things, uh, uh, women, dogs, and donkeys, especially black dogs, as in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. We move on from here to uh, uh, the following chapter, which deals with khushur. And here they uh, uh, translate khushur to humility in salat. Humility in salat. I, I don't know, I don't feel like it's a good translation. Maybe submissiveness is more of a better 
word, submissiveness. And again, this is an Arabic and Islamic terminology, so it's almost difficult to find an equivalent of it in English. But what does khushu' mean? Khushu' means that, on, and before we, we start uh, talking about khushu', is it part of the deeds of the heart or part of the deeds of the body? What do you think, Abu Malik? Heart. It's part of the heart. Is, is this acceptable to you guys? Yeah. Mustafa? It's both. It's of both. But originally, it is in the heart. But this has to show on your body. Meaning that there are three types of people praying. You have the khashir, a person that prays with a submissive uh, the submissiveness in his heart is overwhelming to the extent that he is not moving in prayer. So both his, his heart and body are in, in, in control of his prayer. He has full submissiveness and khushur. And then you have a second type is a person who is praying. On the surface, he doesn't move. So his, he, is a pray, he, he is praying. But his heart is traveling and wandering everywhere. And the majority of Muslims are, are like this. They're not moving, they're praying, but their hearts are everywhere, flying and swimming and, and shopping and uh, uh, visiting relatives while they look as if they are praying. So these, this, this type of people, yani, their prayer is accepted, but the reward is not as full. And the third type, are those who do not have any submissiveness, neither in their hearts nor in their bodies. So you find that their hearts are wandering everywhere and they are moving. You know, they're scratching here and there, rubbing their bodies, movement, fixing their uh, clothing, uh, picking their noses, doing things that are not, they're not supposed to do. So submissiveness, al-khushur, is in your heart and it's also in your body and that is why there are hadiths that said that if this man's heart had submissiveness then he should not have been moving as much as he did we have a short break stay tuned inshallah we will be right back assalamu alaikum rahmatullah and welcome back we're still studying the first hadith we have not read it yet that deals with khushur submissiveness humility in prayer and I'd like to ask a, a question that lots of people usually ask which is how can we reach khushur how can we obtain and gain the level of khushur so what do you think Muhammad I think uh, when we should uh, start in, uh, in praying we just see to the point that uh, where we, we put our uh, forehead so I think maybe in the thinking or in uh, and not just to move uh, yeah not to move and what uh, the Imam is uh, reading we just think in that try to uh, contemplate in uh, what yeah. the Imam is saying brother Mustafa I think we can concentrate more if we have in our hearts if we really understand in our hearts who we're praying for okay so this becomes with the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal brother Noor yeah uh, we have to realize that we are in connection with Allah so you have to understand that you are praying, and so it should be different than if you're not praying. Mustafa? Knowing the names and attributes of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and knowing how great uh, Allah is and how Excellent. powerful He is and how knowledgeable so He is. So the more no knowledge you have about Allah, Azza wa Jal, and about uh, His attributes and names, then this increases your submissiveness, your khushur in salah. Brother Fadi? I think the major thing is we don't sin. If you, you cannot like listen to music and keep uh, not lowering your gaze and then come try to feel khushu and salah, it won't work the same if you have not committed these sins, you know. Okay, but before I go on to Brother Abu Malik, is it possible that people don't sin? No, it's not. Y you have to sin. Not, don't, you know, quote me. When I say you have to sin, this doesn't mean turn off the TV or change the, the channel, let's, well, let's watch uh, HBO or 
move it to something that is rated X or W or Y or Z. No. And when we say you have to sin out of your human weakness. But Allah Azza wa tells us that the more you sin and ask for, for forgiveness, the more Allah will forgive you. But when it becomes an epidemic, when it reaches the level that you sin and you don't seek Allah's forgiveness, then you are doomed. The Prophet says, Asam, all mankind are, uh, is sinful. They're all sinful. And the best among them sinfuls are those who repent. So if you repent to Allah, then Allah forgives you. Abu Malik? Well, I think if we practice the correct way of, uh, you know, uh, how do you say, it? offering the prayer, mm -hmm. and the exact sunnah, I think that, you know, that will increase our khushua in the prayer. Thank okay. Um, all what you have said, inshallah, is correct. The question is very easy. How can we reach khushur? The answer, on the other hand, is very, very difficult and it's a long process. You had a comment? I remember something we said that the minute we, we enter the prayer, the world should be behind our backs and forget everything. Like with Allahu Akbar, just focus in on the prayer and nothing else like Yeah, but, but is it that easy? Is it that easy that one says, ah, thanks, I didn't know that. Okay, I'm going to pray now and I'm going to have 100% uh, a false proof uh, uh, prayer, it's not easy. It depends entirely on your lifestyle. You cannot transform all of a, uh, all of a sudden and have a perfect 100% uh, uh, Islamic life. You have to transform yourself. So if a person is indulged in his world, in his business, in his uh, uh, school, and has nothing to do with Allah the Almighty doesn't pay much attention to what Allah asks us to do and what Allah forbids us to do and he concentrates mainly on this life that he's living so Allah Allah Azza wa Jal and Islam is at the end of the prior his priorities such a person would not have khushu'a in Salat so a lot of people come and complain and say how can we reach khushur? The answer would be, you have to transform your lives into becoming good Muslims. Then they ask, does this mean that we have to leave everything we are doing and go to a mosque and stay there for 24 hours? The answer would be, no. And even if you do this, you will not get khushur. Then, how, how do you want us to do? The, the answer is very simple, but it is very difficult to apply. You have to be original and real committed Muslims. Even if you're a businessman, even if you are filthy rich, even if you are filthy poor, even if you are handicapped, no matter what color, race, or position you are holding or you're from, regardless of this, you have to apply Islam in your whole life, in the way you treat people in the way you treat yourself and in the way you treat your Lord Allah the Almighty Azza wa Jal. If you succeed in transforming this, you, know, you get khushur. Because if you sin and you enjoy sins, then you will not find the taste and the, uh, and the flavor of prayer when you pray. It would become a burden, you just want to pray. Now, if you look at the time of the Prophet, والسلام, he used to come and tell Bilal, Arihna biha. Meaning, Bilal, call for the prayer and give us comfort with prayer. Nowadays, people come into the mosque, watching their watches and saying, Come on, come on, come on, relieve us from prayer. Arihna minha, relieve us from prayer. Make iqama, let's get it over with. Not as a form of comfort but as a burden you want to throw off your back and that is why it's 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 exactly as far as the east and west our prayers to their prayers you have to transform your life change it to the better in the sense that when you are a businessman it's okay to for you to deal in business
transactions and do this or that, don't do anything that is haram. Don't deal in interest. Don't deal in mortgages. Don't sell things that are forbidden. Don't uh, uh, have uh, haram or forbidden transactions. If you are a student, concentrate on your studies. Concentrate on the subject you're learning. But at the same time, set your priorities not to sin, not to skip salah, not to allow people to talk bad about your religion without you standing and defending it. Try your best to give the best example as a best uh, uh, idle Muslim. And so on. The minute you do this, the minute you do as Brother Muhammad said, by uh, uh, looking at the place of your prostration, not moving, and contemplating on what the Imam is reciting. Because if the Imam recites the Quran, you don't, don't know what he's doing, what he's saying. And you're, you're, all what you're thinking of is, did I put the shopping list in my pocket before I left home or not? Did, did my wife write uh, 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 the chocolate cake ingredients or, or, or didn't she? Because I want to buy gr groceries after Salah. This is the only thing you think of, thinking of Salah. You will never reach the uh, 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 level or the standard of khushur. Um, again, you have to always correct your intention. And this adds more value to your khushur. When you pray, this prayer is for whom? Lots of the kids say, this prayer is for my father. Because if I, if I don't pray, he's going to spank me. Students in school say, this prayer is for the headmaster. Because if I don't pray, he's going to call my pa father who's going to spank me, and he's going to uh, uh, take away some of the marks off me. And if you go to the wife, she says, well, this prayer is for my husband, because if I don't pray, I don't think he's going to spank me, but he's not going to love me as I want him to, and he's not going to take me uh, on holiday in summer, or he's not going to buy me this or that. So the most important thing is intention. What's, what is your intention when you pray? I pray to satisfy my, my Lord, my Allah, to seek His uh, uh, approval and to seek His forgiveness. This adds more value to your prayer. When you know the attributes of Allah, so when you say Allahu Akbar, when you say Subhana Rabbi al Azim, when you say Sami Allah Limin Hamidah, Allah Azza wa Jal hears whoever calls Him and, and praises Him, this also adds value to uh, you. Uh, Mustafa, you have anything to add? So all of these things, if you add them together, you start to notice that you are finding more value to your prayer. And you start to find that prayer has a flavor. It's not something that you just, you know, bow and prostrate and salam alaikum and, and that's it. What did you do? I don't know. What did the Imam recite in the first rak'ah? I don't know. What did he do in the second rak'ah? I don't know, I, I, I'm just praying, man. Why are you interrogating me? I'm not interrogating you. I'm just asking you to ask yourself, did I benefit from what I have done? Or was it all in vain? And it's very essential because remember, the first thing that Allah will question you on the day of judgment is prayer. prayer. So if it's valid, if it's accepted, then accordingly all the other deeds, fasting, hajj, uh, pilgrimage, will be uh, accepted. But if it's not, then you have a problem and you should fix uh, uh, this problem. The following hadith, or the first hadith, is number 187. Narrated by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, Allah's Messenger وسلم, forbade keeping one hands on one's waist while praying. And in the narration of Al-Bukhari, narrated by Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, is this is a practice of the Jews. Now, w what do we mean by uh, uh, the Prophet forbade keeping one's hand on one's waist while praying? Now, this is called takhassur in Arabic. It has a form that is well known to put your hands on your waist. Does anybody pray like this? Because this is the way that Jews pray. I, I've never seen a Jews praying. And if, if any uh, of the Jews are watching and said, hey, this, we don't pray like this. Well, we're talking about the time that the, at the Prophet when, when they used to pray in, in, a, in a similar way. So this could be the khassur, 
putting your hands on the waist. And also, it could be when you put your hands like so. So instead of putting the right hand over the left, you cross them and put your hands on your waist. And there are a lot of Muslims that, that do this. The sunnah is to put your palm of the hand on the palm of uh, uh, your left hand, or the sunnah is to hold your wrist with your right hand. But to go all the way here, or to go all the way there, this is not the sunnah, and it is uh, similar to what the Jews uh, did. I'm afraid that this is all the time we have for today's program. So inshallah, until we meet next time, fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.